Learn how to create the stylized shaders like the one you're seeing right here by checking out the link in the description below. So as you know, part 4 of the Guilty Gear stylized shaders in Blender, Eevee is going to come out soon. I'm still preparing materials to show you more advanced stuff. But I will be specifically talking about the newest uh, shading methods that are using for Dragon Fighters, Dragon Ball Fighter C and Grand Blue Fantasy Versus, which are unique. They are really, really, truly marvelous shaders. And it took me quite a while to figure out how to correctly connect some of the um, some of the networks that they previously have uh, regarding the characters. So in the end I um, finished it, so for those of you who have followed the series you know what this means. I had to put three of these to get the different levels for the shading to react to the light. So check this out, if I grab my light, which is a sunlight by the way, you can see it right here. The strength, oddly, is not 1, it's 0 0.9. I can explain this technically but I let you see by yourself. So what this does is to direct the light, obviously, and create the shading for for some of the parts of the body. Now the reason why it's flickering, the reason why it's not a perfect shading per se, it's because the cascade size has been lowered to 128 and I have deactivated high big depth and soft shadows. There are tricks here that you need to really... Um, understand how blender works which i also will explain in part four so that you get the correct settings because not only you have to color management and correct this from uh, um, filmic to standard because if you put filmic look how this is looking it's kind of pale and it kind of works if you're working with comp composition but if if you're aim is just to hit render and then you know go compose uh, or create a movie then you're going to need to switch to standard for the view transform and since this shader reacts to light I'm going to go to the world and then I'm going to switch this up and down as a, and as you can see the shader reacts accordingly I was arming this and I figured, you know what? Since we're going to be using all of this, all of these uh, methods, we might probably as well go the the extra mile and allow him to glow, probably or or change um, lighting conditions. So, if I turn the world down, for example, just a little bit down, I get my shadows back. So I can tint my shadows, which is a very desirable uh, effect in animation. So if you want to tint them from here, you can do it right away. And also you can tint the body. So in case you want to, you know, like uh, over exceed his capacity or or his powers, whatever, you know, you can turn him yellow and there, there you go. And of course, if you uh, pump up the light, it is going to react accordingly. So I'm going to leave this also customized um, for for this model. And of course, I'm going to be scripting this. I I did saw the the Brawly movie. Damn, that was good. That was really good. You know, like when they they were fighting. It came to my mind that you know they are going to break the space time barrier. And just as I had that thought, you know, in the movie, space time barrier broke, shattered. That was like the most epic moment I've seen from the series in, in quite a long time. So what to do about this flickering thing? Because if you're going to be animating and then he moves and then he moves, you're going to get flickered, right? Well, not so. Uh, it depends on how much um, twisting of the light you're going to do. That's why when these characters move, the light does not move um, in a in a Bessier manner, the light moves in frame one could be right here, frame two could jump up here, 
and can twist as well. So that's that's how you get from from this kind of lighting and then another kind of lighting because in the game that's what's going on. In the game specifically for for the fireballs and stuff. This game is even more advanced because it it uses a lot of tricks directly to the channel. The hair, for example, when he's charging, and I find this uh, beautiful work, beautiful technical work, uh, what they do is to, to slide the UVs, okay, in, uh, they have like this UV segment defined, and then they run this, this, um, this function where the UV starts uh, variating. So the hair appears to be um, having more strands, but in reality, the only thing that happened is that the UV it's like sliding. So it's a very useful technique in, in the game, very very um, very beautifully artistically directed. So what else? Oh yes, the outliner. So if you see this, it's because right now I'm 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 on only using just a few uh, samples for the viewport. If I go like 64 and then I press F12 to render. Oops, no camera found. Let's add a camera. Shift A. What about this? And now Control Alt 0 to make this. Now press N. View. Select lock camera to view to move the camera. Press N again. Press home. Now this resizes to the screen size and now you can uh, move this around. So about this you press F12 and then you'll you're you'll go, you're going to get this kind of render which seems to be uh, in a low quality in a low quality um, anti-aliasing so what you need to do of course it depends on what you do it's to uh, increase the cascade size uh, I'm sorry that's for shadows but um, if you're close enough to the model what you need to do is to select obviously your model and then here in thickness from the solidify you need to just decrease a little bit decrease your thickness just a little bit so what about this if you press F12 let's see what we get we still get this so there are issues that you need to consider when you're using the the solidify because most people have told me you know when we use that then we get some artifacts yes indeed but um, Please bear in mind that you have to tweak most of these parameters until you fit or until you find what you need. And this flickering by itself, it's caused by the this the solidify outliner. I'm sorry, the solidify modifier. So if I switch this off, so you can see the artifacts disappear. So there are ways around this. You can create a shader and you can also use uh, specific groups so for example I'm going to go to edit mode I'm going to select everything and now I'm going to press C because I want to unselect so I'm going to press control now I'm sorry shift yes shift and then I'm going to go around his face because all of this I want to exclude okay I want I do not want my modifier to affect this guy so I'm going to select all of this, like so. Escape, Control C, Control Z, C, Shift, and continue my selection. I don't want this. 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 I don't need this either so I'll just leave that there I'm going to come here to my vertex groups and I'm going to be creating a new vertex group which is called uh, outliner yes kind of a silly name but I need you to get the general idea so now I'm going to assign it and you will notice that everything was assigned except the face so guess what we can filter now we can go back to object mode you can come here to the modifier and you see this little um, group this is for vertex vertex groups here outliner yes so what is going on 
It picked everything around the body except the face, which we unselected. You see that, right? So now everything has an outliner except the face. And you can continue this process um, selecting again. You can come back here, um, enter edit mode. And as you can see there, it's unselected. So press C and continue to unselect all of this by pressing shift. And now unselect all of this because I don't want the outliner to go here. Now, this is the back call method, but um, Blender has the freestyle option for you. So you can, so again, assign. And if you notice, this is 100 weight percent assign. So everything that will filter using this vertex group will assign it to 100%. So again, since it was already selected, now all of the uh, artifacts that we used to get here should disappear. They did not disappear, so let's go back here. Maybe I was uh, distracted. I, oh, okay, I see now what's going on. I'm going to create a new group, all right? So let's delete this. One new group. This is going to be called New Assign Vertex group and now I'm going to assign all of the selected points so you you will see that since these vertices were not selected they will not be assigned to that so now let's go back let's remove this and now I'm going to select assign new as new assign vertex group this one and let's exit object mode so here we go you can still see some of the artifacts because I have not chosen all of the faces, but you get the idea. You can clean this and even apply a specific texture modifier to, to create even thicker outlines for your character. Stylizing the outline is another thing that I'll be talking in, in deep uh, subject in part four. So it's been 14 minutes now. I would really like to thank you for your subscription to my channel. If you have any kind of questions regarding this model or the entire stylized shader series, you can ask them down here in the comment box below. And I'll thank you if you consider subscribing to my channel and following the updates for all of my social networks. Thank you very much. If you activate Bloom and then your outliner, which in my case is an emission shader, uh, completely black. I can turn this thing to, I don't know, let's say blue and pump it up to 64 and this guy in a, a darker background color could be activating his ultra instinct and stuff now. Ain't this cool? My mind. This is just amazing. Sometimes I take the craziest challenges. So I created these controllers for this character so you can drive it even with different colors. For example, if I want this light tint, I don't need to enter the shader anymore. I just created um, a driven set parameters, uh, which are called properties. So these properties drive the shaders over here for the light tint. And for example, if he's going to be transforming into his Ultra Instinct stuff, going to use the shadow color. I, I don't exactly remember what are the shadow colors for that. Let's just use, uh, I don't know, this 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 sounds like something he, he'd do. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I know I'm wrecking this, this guy. It's not my intention. So the Ultra Instinct thing is just the um, second name for, for the outline. So you can see right there, it's uh, catching on fire already. So I'm going to go all the way to, for example, 80. Oops, I need to correct that. I'm going to go here, the properties of the object and ultra instinct energy. So the maximum, it's, I don't know, uh, let's say 100. Let's go for that. So the default value is going to be one. And even if you uh, hover this, you're going to get um, the comments. So what this is for, great. So let's go 50. And why don't I see any changes? Why don't I see any changes? I don't see the outliner for that matter. <laughs>
So sometimes it's better not to directly write here, but I'm going to be adding a an arbitrary value node. So I'm going to connect that there. Although this should not pose a problem initially, but it seems I did something that I wasn't supposed to do. So let's go again for the instinct energy. So let's copy this as a new driver and I'll come here and then I'll, I'm going to paste it as a new driver. So whatever this says, the other one should follow. 0 0.5, 0 0.5, let's go for 80 and it follows now. So yeah, basically if you want to put a higher value than one here in the shader, it will not allow it. But you need to overwrite that natively with an arbitrary value node. So that's why it didn't um, work before. So let's continue. Um, so you have this, I have um, strength set to 80, but here comes the cool part. Now I'm going to put this all the way over here, and guess what? This guy is just on fire, rather on ultra instinct level. <laughs> I know, I know. Um, if you press F12, I guess you, you're going to get your render yeah, correctly created. Isn't this neat? Alright, I hope you have liked this, um, you have seen all the capacities that this uh, model has, so you can click there and it will uh, be a property available here in the items transform. So thank you very much once again.